Hello and welcome to your vision this week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Oketumbi and we're reaching you from the air side of the domestic terminal in Lagos. Aircraft cabins are pressurized using cold and filtered air bled from the engines, keeping the air pressure comfortable enough for passengers. While the dry air may cause passengers to become a little dehydrated, but happily they're able to breathe, watch a film or even browse a duty-free catalog. But this can change suddenly when there is a loss of cabin pressure. What exactly is depressurization? That's what we seek to unravel on this edition. And our flight is set for takeoff. Passengers filing into an aeroplane for an intended flight. And flights like this take place aboard modern aircraft designed to fly at high altitudes. For example, a Boeing 747 aircraft normally cruises at an altitude of 28,000 to 35,000 feet. This is because aircraft consume less fuel. Airplanes, big aeroplanes, 737, the Dashets and above, are designed to fly at very high altitude. Flying at very high altitude makes life easier for those the engines that power the aeroplanes. It makes it um, easier, it makes it possible for the aeroplane to travel further on the same amount of uh, fuel. It makes it if the flying smoother and, and generally uh, more comfortable for passengers. When you at higher altitudes, the air mass is thinner, therefore there is less turbulence. However, the human body is not designed to survive at such high altitudes, so the air pressure inside the cabin must be controlled. Without a fully functional pressurized cabin, passengers and crew need to use oxygen. Aircraft is built in such a way that um, it's not a 100% um, system that is built in such a way that nothing can happen or no failure can happen. As human beings, sometimes we have malaria, our system is not working very well. Pressurization problem on, in, in the cabin will make the passengers to be uncomfortable and thereby everybody will start to talk about one thing or the other and the next thing that we are thinking of, maybe the aircraft wants to crash. While air pressure in the cabin must be controlled, sometimes depressurization may occur. And what exactly is this? Depressurization is the occurrence of any event that leads to loss of pressure in the cabin. While the loss of pressurization is an emergency in an aircraft flying at the normal cruising altitude for most jet passenger aircrafts, most times it's an issue of comfort than safety. The aircraft has got backup systems in the case of a depressurization. There are things that will come into, into place to not to avoid it, which it's already happened. That's why the oxygen masks will come down. So. If the oxygen mask didn't come down, there would be a problem. But there was a problem with the depressurization and the oxygen masks deployed automatically. So we knew that everybody knows that system is working. And when it does occur, an emergency descent comes to the rescue. In the case of an uncontrolled depressurization, the crew will want to descend immediately to an altitude at which they and the passengers can breathe without supplementary oxygen. Um, whenever there is depressurization, pilots or pilots are trained. It's part of their qualification uh, requirements. You're trained to handle it. All you just do is descend to um, a, an altitude that does not require aircraft pressurization, and then you continue. Although at that point the, the, the flying will be less efficient on the airplane, but at least then the passengers. Uh, they are safe. They, don't, they will not be under the risk of passing out because of insufficient amount of air. The concentration is reduced to match with the environment. When it gets to a level around 10,000 feet, where the concentration inside the aeroplane is the same thing as outside the aeroplane. So that's all that pressurization does. Pressurization has no bearing on, on the ability of the aeroplane to fly. There are different causes for depressurization. And these include structural failure, which is a failure of a window, door, or pressure bulkhead, for example, or in-flight explosion. An in-flight explosion may be due to system failure, dangerous cargo, or a malicious act consequential on such as an explosive device on board. Pressurization system failure. 
which is malfunction of some part of the pressurization system, such as an outflow valve, inadvertent system control impute, which is accidental or incorrect activation of a critical pressurization control, deliberate act, which is a drastic measure but one which an aircraft captain might consider, for example, as a way of clearing the cabin of smoke. Away from potential causes, crashes or fatalities from pressure problems are extremely uncommon, even with a fairly rapid decompression brought on by a hole or puncture bust. Frequent fathers must know the announcement. Should the cabin experience sudden pressure loss, oxygen masks will drop down from above your seat. Place the mask over your mouth and nose. On our interview segment, an airline pilot with years of experience breaks down the depressurization issue using the Just Plateau weather as an example and adds that passengers should pay attention to the cabin crew announcement. When, when, you, when you travel to Jaws, which is higher, when you are running, you get tired. So because of lack of oxygen, because the higher you go, the oxygen level d drops. And the physiology of the body uh, becomes uh, reduced. So that means you get tired. So when you enter an airplane that is at 8,000 feet, that means it's simulating the condition. You are at 35 or whatever feet, you are at 30,000 feet but it's simulating the condition of 8,000 feet, that is the level of oxygen, nitrogen, whatever it is that is in the atmosphere at that level, is simulating that same factor at 8,000 feet. First of all, pilots are trained. The first uh, things that you are trained about is depressurization, because you have to understand, we are operating at uh, 35 or 40,000 feet. So if there is any uh, depressurization problem, you must be aware of it and you must be trained to quickly react to it. Uh, in my careers of flying, yes, I've had maybe two or three depressurizations and uh, it was just a normal um, uh, emergency procedure that you follow, which you've been trained every six months, you are trained for it. Um, I don't think the passengers should have any, um, any fear because we always brief them in the event that we lose carbon pressure, this is what we're going to do. So this is the event that we have lost the carbon pressure. That's, that's just normal for me, that's, uh, that's absolutely normal. What will cause, what will have a problem is what caused the carbon pressure to be, to be lost. That's the only, this time. But if there is nothing, if, if let's say the outflow valve decides to open and then dumps all the pressure, it's not, a, it's not a problem. You start an uh, emergency descent and you put your mask. The airplane will fly perfectly at 14,000 feet and nothing happens. So in my experience, I think uh, I was flying the Park 11 then we had a pressurization problem. And uh, of course we did what we were trained to do, done the oxygen mask. And the passengers, uh, of course, a bit frightened, but uh, they also done the oxygen mask. But I encourage passengers not to be frightened as far as the airplane is flying. They should just don the oxygen mask and, um, and operate normally until the airplane comes to a comfortable level of about 14,000 feet and they will be asked to remove the mask and then continue a normal flight. After all, the airplanes that we fly at 14,000 feet, we don't need an oxygen mask for it. No, I think the problem with most passengers and especially Nigerian passengers is they feel that flying is a myth. But there's science to it. And the, the, I keep saying that the safest way to travel is by air. And there are empirical figures for that. And they should be, they, we should understand the science behind flying. If you understand the science behind flying, and you do see the f uh, flights, how they go, and you read about it, I don't think there's anything to be scared of. The aircraft, is not that it's magically flying. It has engines, two engines, like you have in the car. It, it sucks air and then produces thrust, and the air aerofoil creates lift, and it takes the airplane up in the air. And the, the, uh, the aerodynamics cause it to turn around and everything, and there is no mystique about it. 
It's just the science of flying. That's all it is. Uh, I've seen the videos of uh, the, the one that went viral on airpiece. But in the videos that I've seen, most of the passengers did not pull the mask. And they say, pull the mask. And they were putting the mask, and of course they say there's no oxygen. They're always not working. You're supposed to have pulled it because the action of pulling it it release the oxygen flow. So it is very important to listen to, to those announcements. They are not announcements meant for just announcements. They are announcements meant to save lives. They are announcements meant to, um, to, to make you comfortable in case of an emergency. And they, are, they had a lot of uh, um, um, depressurization. They have been, I mean, it's just a normal thing. They have landed safely. No, nothing happened. The airpiece, of course, look at it, nothing happened.